photographs of this box now. Take a look. Here it is being constructed. That's it's in the garage. It's like custom built. Think about this again. You're you're a parent. You move into this beautiful home in Jupiter, Florida, and say, "Oh, you know, this is exactly what we need." Well, you know, we'll just do a little bit of uh, uh, customization. We'll put a box in there for our child to live in. Unbelievable. Um, and there's another look at it. I mean, it's for real. It, it actually exists. Let me read for you um, from a probable cause affidavit. Um, the man who built the box was a little suspicious of what was going on here. Like, why am I building a box in the garage? So contacted police. Unbelievable. Great job. Uh, and here's what the police wrote down. Jack advised he was contacted by the owner of blank in the blank to build an office in the garage of the residence. Jack advised he agreed to the job, but after receiving the instructions for the build, he began thinking it was strange. Jack advised the room was built as an eight by eight foot space in the garage with its own ceiling and door. Jack further advised the door had a deadbolt lock and a knob only on the outside. Meaning once you went in, somebody could lock you in, you don't get out. I mean, they have a name for that, it's called jail. That's basically what it's called. Um, Let's bring in the man. What did you, what did they say? What did they say was the reason they needed this box? And what were some of the specs or the specifications that they wanted built inside their garage? So I'll tell you the story as it was. Uh, I got a lead from a company that gives me leads for jobs. And I got the lead about the person who wants to build an office in his garage. So I got the phone number of the owner. I called him. And he said, listen, I live in Arizona. I have an office in my garage, and I, I, I just bought uh, a house in Jupiter, Florida, that we are very close to moving. And I want to build the same exact office in the garage in the house in uh, Jupiter, Florida. I said, okay. And then he sent me there and he, his friend came to open the door for me. And uh, he knew exactly what he wants. He, he said, build me a box. He has a two, two car garage, which is 16 foot long, feet long. And uh, he asked me to build a box basically on eight feet on eight feet. And he asked me on top of that to build a ceiling for that box under the existing ceiling with a space of two feet. So when they open the garage door, she can slide between the two ceilings. Do you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah, the door will slide yeah. back so you can open the garage door. Yeah. So um, basically that box, so basically that box is completely sealed from every uh, uh, way. So I, uh, the first thing I asked him, do you want me to open a window for that office? And he said, no, 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 I don't need a window. So I said, listen, this is Florida. It's very hot in here. You, you're going to cook yourself in this garage, in this office. And I suggest to um, bring in uh, uh, a way from the AC to cool this office. And he said, yeah, yeah, this is a good idea, but I will do it later, so don't worry about it. Wow. And so, so, uh, so far, it was okay for me. So every day when I finish the work, I used to uh, FaceTime him and show him the work we did. 
and that way he can see. Uh, now, in the last day of the job, I show him the, the finish of the job, which was the the, the painting and uh, and the in, uh, installing of the light in the office, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and the door. And then he asked me for one little uh, favor. He said, "Listen, uh, I need a favor from you." I said, "Okay, what?" He said, "Go to the Home Depot." And you know the the interior uh, doors of the house they have a handle lock, yeah. And he asked me to go to the Home Depot and, and buy a deadlock like you have in the in the main door of your house. You see what I mean? Absolutely. You can lock it up so whoever goes in can't get out. And no, no, no. This is not there yet. He asked me to add a deadlock to the to the door, and I said, "Okay, I don't know what he have important things to keep in this office." Uh, so it wasn't look strange to me. So I went to the Home Depot and I bought I bought the the, the deadlock, and I installed it on top of the handle lock. And then I picture it for him, as you can see in the picture I send you. And then he asked me to reverse the locks. That means that the knobs of the locks will be outside of that office, and the key hole will be inside that office. In that office. And I said, okay. On top of that, he asked me to drill a hole in the corner or a camera that he wants to install over there. Wow. And we'll watch. Jacques, can you, can you stay with us, Jacques? We're going we're gonna to take a quick break here. we got to get a commercial in. Uh, Jacques going to stay okay. with us. While mom and dad are living a life of luxury. Now, they have an explanation in it all, so you'll hear it. But let me show you a picture of the parents. They're mugshots. They're arrested. There they are, 40, 46 years old or so. I believe, doing well in life. I, I don't know. I don't know why. If the child needed help, they could afford the help. What child needs to be put in an eight by eight room? I want to know what the explanation is for all of this, and what they're going to say. Ryan Hughes, great reporter for WPTV, our affiliate down in Florida, has more for us tonight. Police say this abuse went unnoticed for years, and according to a new police report, the boy told officers he was once locked inside that tiny structure for up to 18 hours. The report also says the boy pleaded with officers to arrest him because he, quote, rather go to prison than be back at home. Inside the quiet, egret landing community in Jupiter, down the tree-lined streets, and at the end of a cul-de-sac, police say sits a house of horror. <laughs> And it happen. Inside this garage, Jupiter police say a 14-year-old boy was forced to live in an 8 by 8 foot box with a mattress, a camera, and a bucket used to go to the bathroom. Meals were brought to him, but he was only allowed out, police say, to attend school. Everybody is watching out for each other. So I'm really surprised something like this went unnoticed. But police tell us the teen has been physically abused and confined to the small space since at least 2017. Today, his adopted parents, Tracy and Timothy Furriter, in court, now charged with aggravated child abuse and false imprisonment. I came outside yesterday and seen all the cops and stuff. But, like, I didn't think it was something like that. I thought it was like maybe they got in a fight. Jupiter police say they first came to the home after the boy was reported missing by his mom a week and a half ago. Two days later, officers... Does that mean Oh, you're so tough. You're going to say, yeah, you're going to hold it out? Yeah, but I didn't do it. 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 Yeah, but I didn't do Today, Timothy Ferreter appeared live via Zoom in a pretrial court hearing, rejecting a plea deal offered by the state for 24 months in prison and five years probation. If found guilty now, 
when the case goes to trial. He faces 35 years behind bars should he be found guilty and he'll be tried separately from his wife. Today's hearing also involved reviewing hours of witness and evidence testimony or potential evidence and witness testimony admissible during trial. The defense for Tim Parrotter contends the parents were dealing with a, quote, medically complex child and the room or alleged box in question was used for monitoring the child and not neglect. His trial begins Friday morning at 10 with Judge Howard Coates Jr. presiding. All right, Mr. Bushy, has the uh, jury reached a verdict in this matter? No, you, uh, you can just, uh, just tell me yes or no as the jury reached a verdict. All right, if you could please hand the verdict to my um, courtroom deputy. In the Circuit Court of the 15th Judicial Circuit, Criminal Division in and for Palm Beach County, Florida, case number 22CF001136, BMB Division B, State of Florida versus Timothy Dunn Ferrer, defendant. Verdict. We, the jury, find as follows. As to count one, we find the defendant guilty of aggravated child abuse as charged in the information. As to count two, we find the defendant guilty of false imprisonment as charged in the information. As to count three, we find the defendant guilty of neglect of a child as charged in the information. October 2023 in West Palm Beach, Florida, signed by the jury for a person. All right, does either side wish to have the jury polled? All right, so ladies and gentlemen, there's been a request to have the jury polled, and that simply means that each of you. Are telling me something? You made me black. You want to tell me what? This is your one chance. I'm looking for the. Are you telling me something or not? Uh, I have a nice question. Yeah, from where? Uh, blue, blue band. Uh, green band. Shit. I don't care. You 
this stuff is for you. I don't need any of this stuff. I don't need this room. I don't need your shit every single day. You're going to come back and get mad, get happy. Okay, let's be good. Let's have fun. Let's go have ice cream.